Most developers know how to debug their applications, but sometimes they are getting stuck or spend too much time on a simple bug. This is why I prepared for you a list of simple steps that you can follow in order to debug your code faster. And it already helped a lot of other developers, which started to do exactly that. And just before we start, I want to mention one thing. Examples that I prepared for you are relatively simple, but the ideas are exactly the same and you can use them on huge code bases. The main point is that when your code base is huge, obviously it will take more time to find the exact problem. And the first step that I can recommend is optional, but can save you lots of time, especially if this is a huge code base and you don't know it really well. The quick solution here is to use something like Cursor, which can analyze all your files and you can ask that you are looking for implementation of authentication, for example. Then it will show you files where authentication is mentioned and you can look deeper on it. If you are not using AI tools for that, you can spend really a lot of time to understand the code base and to find where to start. But again, this step is optional, so let's look on our problem. The first error that we have here is a runtime error. Inside console we are getting cannot read properties of undefined reading total. It happens really often in different cases, like for example you got some data from the API in the wrong format. And our step number one is to find where this code breaks. So let's say that here in our application we found this exact problem in our billing continue button. You can see it directly in the console, so this is not difficult to find. You can even click on it and see exactly the line where this error occurs. What can we do here? First of all, we can simply write console log and check what data we are getting here. Because if total is undefined, it means we didn't get a card from the outside. Additionally, you can put here a debugger if you prefer this way of debugging. Inside console, we can see that card is undefined. This is why we can't read total of our undefined. The next question is to find out why it is undefined. And it is important to focus on exactly that question because you might see the code in this component and think, okay, this code is really not great, I want to improve it right now. Don't do that. If you are fixing bug, just focus on doing changes in this specific branch, which are only related to this bug. Don't do any refactoring or changes that are not needed. This is what developers are doing all the time. And this is exactly what we are doing in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp. We focus only on stuff that is needed and cover all our code with tests. So now we know that cart is undefined, we need to look on the parent. So you typically want to find all references, and here on the left you can see that it is being used inside AppG6. Here is this component and we are providing cart data inside. And here we can have two different problems. Either initial data is not there or we got some wrong data from the API. How can we check it? The easiest way to check that is to eliminate API completely. So here I am using use effect to make an API call. We basically can just remove it and then we can check if the error still occurs. We can obviously see here that by default the value is set to undefined and even without fetching data this is wrong because we try to read total from the object which is not there. So it doesn't have anything to do with API, obviously it might, so your next step if initial state is correct is to check the response from the API. You need to check two things here, first of all look in network for your request. And secondly, if your response is fine, we typically transform this data somehow on the client and you need to find that place also. So let's set here our card to total 50 and by default let's set an empty object with total 0. In this case it should not break. Let's reload the page, as you can see we are now getting card total and there is no error, but our button is still disabled. Why it happens? In order to understand this, we need to go inside this button and check the disabled state. We see here valid property, by default it is false, and inside use effect we are setting it to this logic. The bare minimum to debug it is to just write here console log and check the value. And as you can see after page reload we are getting ready only once, and it is happening before we loaded data from the API. 
which actually means on initialize we are setting the state once and then our use effect is also triggered once after first render because here we have an empty array and this ready never changes which is completely wrong. The correct fix would be here to just take this ready outside because we don't need use effect at all we just want a computed value ready that we can use inside. And the name ready is not great, so let's name it valid. We don't even need state inside this component, so let's remove this. And now let's check this condition again, because before we saw the error, we cannot read total of undefined. So basically it makes a lot of sense to make our button bulletproof. We don't really care what data we're getting from the outside, we want this code to not break. So first of all, I would like to put here question mark on billing data, billing data card number and card total. It means that if we don't have billing data or card, it will return here undefined and it won't break. But additionally to that, to make it crystal clear, I would like to wrap this code with boolean. And as we can get here undefined also, we need to wrap it with number. Now this code is fully safe and this component will never break. You can see in browser that our button is enabled now when we are getting correct data inside. So let's sum this up what you need to do exactly to fix some bug fast. Step number one, reproduce the problem exactly how user is doing that. Step number two, check your logs and stack trace to understand from where the error is coming. Step number three, identify all your external values that you are getting in your component and check if they are correct. Step number four is checking how inputs of the component and computed properties or state is changed with time. The next step we are applying only if the bug is more difficult. We can strip down the component to bare bones to check how it is still working and then add functionality step by step until we reproduce a bug. Sometimes it makes a lot of sense to replace the API response with mock data just for easier testing and understanding the problem. The next point is extremely important. Change just a single thing at a time. When I see developers changing like 5 or 10 different variables and then check if it is working, this is counterproductive. You will spend a lot of time and you won't understand what exactly causes the issue. In your applications, try to have your state in a single place, like for example Redux. Then it is much easier to debug because you see your state and how every single action changes your state. And after fixing a bug, don't forget to add a reference ID to the commit message so people later can understand what exactly you was trying to fix when they're blaming the code and seeing your name. And if you are serious about improving your skills as a developer and you want to get to a senior level, check my middle to senior frontend bootcamp where we are doing exactly that. The link is in the description.